The essential problem is this. Our bodies have too much sugar. So, imagine that your body is like a sugar bowl, a bowl of sugar, right? So over the decades, what happens is slowly that sugar bowl fills up. And now it's completely full. So what happens when we eat is that the sugar comes in and the bowl is full. So it all spills out into the blood. And that's what we call type 2 diabetes. That's the essential problem. And what do we do about it? Well, right now what we do is we give medications such as insulin, for example. Well, it doesn't actually get rid of the sugar. What it does is it takes that sugar from the blood and it simply forces it back into your body. Your body says, whoa, what am I going to do with it? The bowl is full, so this sugar has to go somewhere else. So what it does is it sends this sugar out into the body, sends it into the eyes, into the kidneys, into the nerves, sends it everywhere because it has nowhere to go. A lot of it is also turned into fat, and that's why insulin tends to cause a lot of weight gain. And what happens over time is that you haven't changed the problem because you never got rid of the sugar in the first place. So what happens when you eat again? Well, exactly the same thing happens. The bowl is full, sugar comes down, spills out into the blood, you take your insulin and you shove it back in. Sugar goes into your body, goes into your eyes, into your kidneys, into your nerve. And what happens when you do this for years and years and years? Well, everything just gets full of sugar, and your entire body essentially just starts to rot. And that's why type 2 diabetes affects virtually every single organ system. Everything. It's a leading cause of blindness, amputations, nerve damage, kidney damage, and dialysis. You get heart attacks, you get strokes, everything starts to rot. As you're forcing all this sugar into your body, what happens? Well, your body eventually can't take anymore because it's completely full. So what do us doctors do? Well, it's full, there's sugar in the blood, so you must need more insulin. So we give you more insulin so that there's more force shoving more sugar into your body. For a while, that's okay, your body fills up again, but eventually it fills up again. And so what happens? We give you even more insulin. And the cycle goes on and on. So the problem is we're not taking care of the actual problem. We're actually just hiding the problem. It's because the key to treatment is not moving this sugar around the body. The key is to actually get rid of this sugar. Think about it this way. Suppose you have garbage in your kitchen. You want to throw out that garbage. But instead, what you do is you take the garbage and put it under the rug. And you keep doing that for a while until your rug is completely full. Then you say, oh, I have garbage in my kitchen. I need a bigger rug. That's the increased insulin analogy. Why would you keep hiding away your garbage? So then you start throwing the garbage under the rug. It gets full. So you throw it into your bedroom. You throw it into your bathroom. All the while, you say, wow, look how clean my kitchen is. But meanwhile, your whole house starts to smell. Same as your body. Your whole body starts to rot. So the key to understanding treatment to type 2 diabetes is you need to get rid of the garbage. You need to get rid of the sugar. There's really two parts to that. One, you need to stop the sugar from coming in. How do you do that? Well, you can follow a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. Because if you're not putting more sugar in, that's going to at least help take care of some of the problem. The other thing you can do is to burn off all that sugar because you need to get rid of it. And how do you do that? Well, one way is intermittent fasting. Fasting means you're not eating anything for a period of time, but your body still needs energy. So the first thing it's going to do is start burning off the sugar. That's great. That's exactly what we want to see, because we want to get rid of all this sugar. And that's the key to understanding type 2 diabetes. I had this patient here, Richard, who came to me for treatment of his diabetes. He had been diabetic for 10 years, he was taking about 70 units of insulin, and he was developing complications. 
He was getting eye disease. He was getting kidney disease. So we changed his diet. We put him on a low carbohydrate diet. And we gave him some simple tips, and we included some intermittent fasting in his regimen. Over a period of months, he lost about 50 pounds. And his diabetes got incredibly better. We took him off all of his insulin, took him off all of his medications, and his blood sugars are normal. Even two years out now, he's still on no medications, and his blood sugars are doing amazing. There's another example we can give. We can look at the example of very low carbohydrate diets, or so-called ketogenic diets. Let me give you a case. I had a 27-year-old graduate student. She was actually studying physiology. And she was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Her hemoglobin A1c was 10.4%. This is a three-month average of her blood sugars. The diagnosis of diabetes happens at 6.5%, so 10.4% is very high. Her doctors were very concerned, of course, started her on three medications right away. Being only 27, she, she didn't want to stay on medications for the rest of her life. So she looked on the internet and decided that she would follow a ketogenic diet. Well, she very quickly lost about 20 pounds. And at her three-month checkup, her hemoglobin A1c was 5.5%, well within the normal range, and clearly not diabetic. Better, she had taken herself off of all her medications as soon as she started. So in this case, it looked like her type 2 diabetes was essentially cured. Wow. This is amazing news. This is amazing. Because type 2 diabetes, in fact, a curable and reversible disease. The fact that treatments exist means that there is hope for all of us.